Good morning. God's richest blessings to you on this glorious day the Lord has given us. Let us rejoice and give him thanks. It is good, Lord, to be here, to be gathered here in his name and to hear his word. Thanks be to God for that. A uh, couple of quick announcements. They have taken away our Christmas in July tree, but if you still have ornaments out, still buy the items, bring them back. We'll deliver them up to Orphan Grain Train at the proper time. Uh, we'd be happy to do that. This, uh, this morning, there is a brunch down at the Senior Center, so go have yourself some, I, I think it's pancakes this run, so uh, go down, have some pancakes, maybe it's waffles, I don't know, uh, but go down there, have brunch today, support the Senior Center, and <clears throat> Kira's in the back, she's selling Eagle cards, so if you want one of those Eagle discount cards, see Kira in the back, she, she gave, gave me on good authority last night that this is her last year selling Eagle cards. I said, you know what that means, Kira? You have to pass everything, right? So uh, <laughs> she, she assured me that wasn't going to be a problem, so that's good. But uh, so Eagle cards at 1 o'clock today, if you feel so inclined, we're going to gather down at Kira's and Sharon's and uh, pack up the last of the cans in the trailer. We got cans this year. Oh my word, have we got cans. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful blessing. So uh, we'll take those down this next week, I think, or something like that. Thanks to everybody who helps with that. Thanks to everybody who helped with the food stand. Chelsea, uh, do you, if you see Jean, thank her and Ben and, and our, our great pie lady back there. Susie kept the pies on and coming. And I even heard once you took pies away and brought them right back again. So you just never know when you're going to get a pie run, do you? Yeah. No way. Holy cow. <laughs> well, there's a good problem. Wow, 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 wow. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Chelsea, how did we turn out with the stand? We, did we do better? Yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, thanks be to God for that as well. Yeah, thanks be to God. Well, what a gift. If you didn't work in the stand, boy, did you miss out. Uh, it was it was fun it, with the new equipment there. Of course, I get jazzed about this sort of thing. But uh, you know, <laughs> I really geek. That's why I watch cooking shows too. Uh, but uh, uh, it really was a lot of fun, and we had a good time. And you're always welcome to, to come and join. Now we'll just start prepping for next year. So here we go. We've got 360 what two days. Uh, to get ready for the next one. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I think that's all I have by way of announcements today. Any others we need to make? All right, God's blessings to you all on your worship this morning.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart. For great is your steadfast love toward me. O oh God, insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seek my life. But you, O oh Lord, are a gracious God, merciful and gracious. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God. Let us pray. O God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your whole final judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter, 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 44, beginning at verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me, since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle comes from Romans chapter 8. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now, And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes in what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the weed and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do what you want to us. Then do you want us to go and gather them? And he said, No, lest the gathering of the weeds you root up the weed along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, and the good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out his kingdom, all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite any children who are here this morning to come forward for our children's message. Anybody want to come up today? I'm getting no takers. Okay, you're missing out. <laughs> 
We continue with our sermon hymn. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're focusing primarily today on our epistle lesson from Romans chapter 8. And I got to tell you, you know, reading through it, you may find this surprising, but this is one of my favorite passages, especially from Romans, but really in Scripture, I find this is a go-to for me an awful lot. And I go to it repeatedly as I talk with and work with and study with people all the time. And I think primarily why I like this passage from Romans 8, beginning at verse 18, is because it's so practical. It's realistic. And I think, you know, by and large, I I tend to be a realistic person. Uh, I'm not so much of an optimist, although I'm very optimistic about lots of things. And that's a good thing. One should be optimistic about things, for which there should be optimism. I'm not necessarily a pessimist either. I don't just walk around doom and gloom and, you know, all Eeyore all the time. Oh, I'm okay. You know, that's not good either. But being realistic about the things of the world and life in this world is important for us, especially as Christians. And Paul gives us a real dose of realism here. And and I named the, the, you know, I titled this sermon Future Glory because I really thought that, you know, a sermon titled, well, duh, just wouldn't work. But that's what Paul is saying here. 
That's one of my favorite phrases, although last night uh, Angie and Abby reminded me that, uh, uh, well, duh is one of my favorite phrases. You know, when, when someone experiences an outcome from something they've done or something in the world, and it happens, and they're surprised by it, and I go, well, duh, what'd you expect, right? Only, I, I like to refer back to my 80s upbringing quite a bit, and, and I often use, well, doy, a lot, too. Uh, and that gets said a lot in my house as well. But Paul here, to the Roman church, is giving them one big, well, doy, because he's being realistic. He's saying that in the sin-fallen world, we will struggle. There will be suffering. It's a gimme. It's part and parcel with the fall into sin. And it's not just our human uh, uh, beingness that is affected, but all of creation affected by sin and sin in the world. Paul explains it very eloquently by saying that creation is groaning, waiting for its redemption. And then he uses one of my go-to illustrations. And I use this illustration a lot. When I go out and and I do RSTM work with congregations all over the place, and, and, you know, they're, they're, they're all doom and gloom, and sometimes we can be doom and gloom, right? Oh, we don't have enough people. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough blah, blah, blah. You fill in the blank. Everything is doom and gloom. We never have enough, and things aren't going well, and gosh, I wish we were back in this day, and blah, blah, blah. And I pull out Romans 8. And Paul's illustration here. Now, mind you, I have never gone through birthing pains. I have driven a woman uh, an hour to the hospital once that was going through them. And so I get an inkling of how that can feel because my hand went from this size to, you know, about this size. But uh, Emily came very shortly thereafter. Uh, yeah, but I have experienced them. I've seen the, you know, the, the ticker tape that comes out of the machine. I get it on paper anyway. But Paul uses the example of birth pains, contractions, which, as I understand it, are a little painful. Anybody agree? See, she missed out today. Kaylee's missing out. She get this whole thing. <laughs> A little painful. But the thing with contractions, with birth pains is, the contractions start to get longer and longer and longer, and the pain lasts longer and longer and longer, and there's less break in between until it just seems like one big long contraction. And that is how Paul describes the the world, that the troubles and the trials and the sufferings of this world are continually going to get harder and harder, more intense, And there's going to be less break in between them. So when we see that the world is falling apart, we ought to guess it just would, duh. Of course it is. That's what sin and the evil one has done to the world. Just like in our parable of the good seed and the weeds. If the weeds get sown in and amongst the, the, the good wheat, well, duh, of course the weeds are going to grow up and try to choke everything out. Of course they are. And the thing is, in a sin-fallen world, you plant the stupid weeds. You can dig the doggone things up, and they keep coming back, even when the grass won't grow. I got this thing growing in my backyard. I don't even know what it is. Some kind of tubular thing that grows everywhere, but from a distance it looks green, so I'm not killing it. You see, that's the world in the sin-fallen world. And so, Paul reminds us that we will go through sufferings because it's part and parcel of being in a sin-fallen world and having sin-fallen flesh. Not everything is going to be sunshine and daffodils. Things are going to be tough. That struggle comes to bear on us day in and day out the pressures of the world and just the crazy evil things that the evil one is planting those weeds out there. They're constantly all around us reminding us of the the fallen nature of this world and, and how the world is groaning. But not just the world, but we ourselves. 
So often sickness and heartache and loss enter our lives, and it's a struggle, and we suffer. Sometimes we suffer by bearing our cross. Sometimes we suffer because we lay our cross down, or we try to anyway. That suffering is all around us each and every day. And so when someone comes up to me and they talk about this suffering, this sin-fallen world, I want to say, well, duh, of course we're suffering. Now, mind you, I don't say, well, duh, unless it's my kid. Sometimes I do say that. But of course we're suffering. Look at what Paul says. And if I ended the sermon here, this would be one lousy sermon, that's for sure. Because the suffering is all around us all the time. But remember what Paul said at the very beginning of our reading from Romans 8 in verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, now here's the key, the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, here it is. We go through sufferings in the world, of course we do in a sin-fallen world with sin-fallen flesh, but they cannot even remotely compare to the glory that God is revealing to us. The glory that God is revealing in His Son, Jesus Christ. You see, that glory of God took on human flesh, and the glory dwelt among us in the birth of that child in Bethlehem. The glory of God lived a perfect life on earth, muted under human flesh. And the glory of God died an undeserved death. But the glory of God once again bursts forth. For nothing in the world can compare to the glory of the Lord. Because he bursts forth from the tomb. And there the glory of God shone brightly. Think about what God says in our Old Testament lesson, our, our lesson from the prophet Isaiah. There is no other God. Let them try and they cannot deliver. I think about the, the, uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal there, right? Where the glory of God comes, just let the prophets do what the prophets are going to do. Let the world is going to try to do what the world is going to try to do. And then Elijah steps up, soaks everything with water, and boom, it's all gone. And the glory of the Lord shines forth. Nothing those prophets could do, even remotely compared to the glory of the Lord shown forth in the work of our one true God. And the glory of the Lord is revealed to us in the waters of holy baptism, where we are washed clean of our sin, that old Adam put to death, the new creation rises from the depths. And the glory of the Lord comes to us in, with, and under bread and wine as we receive him for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. The glory of the Lord is revealed to us when even we who are poor, miserable sinners hear those words, you are forgiven. You are redeemed in Christ Jesus and you are a new creation. And nothing, nothing in this world compares to that. At our very lowest, we can turn to these words of Paul. And we can hear that nothing in these present sufferings compares to the glory that is to be revealed to us. And the beauty is, if the glory of the Lord ended here, well, thanks be to God we have it, but that's still not the end of the sermon. It's not the end of the, the glory of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord will return. And when he returns, he's going to redeem all of creation. No more weeds, no more sickness, no more suffering, no more sin. But we, redeemed in Christ Jesus, will see the glory of the Lord face to face. Until then, we hope for what we do not see. Oh, we get little glimpses of it. Yet, like Jesus said to Thomas, blessed are you because you see, blessed even more are those who do not see and yet believe. And so, giving little glimpses of it, we are restored and strengthened for the day in the gospel of Jesus Christ that we might know his love 
And so when we are restored in Christ, we might as well say, well, duh, of course everything looks different. I don't have to live like the world lives. I don't have to join the world in their crusade for self-attainment. But instead, I can live, we can live in the glory of the Lord and do that seed scattering as he has called us to do, to spread that good news to the world that the world would know what we know. And well, duh, God is going to make it work because he's God. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in and through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join together now in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the... to their needs. Redeemer and Lord of hosts, the future is in your hands. Remove all fear from us and keep us mindful that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of heaven and earth, we give thanks that your son Jesus Christ died to redeem the world and restore creation. Until new life supplants the groanings of this age, Lead us to steward your creation well, not in waste, but in wise and diligent use with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, pour out your blessing of your Holy Spirit on the delegates who will assemble in convention this week. Give wisdom to those who propose, deliberate, and decide for the work and welfare of our synod. Guard all who speak and all who listen. Give courage to do with integrity what we promise. Bless our plans and actions and grant success. Only let our manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Especially we pray your blessing also be upon those who prepare for full-time church work, namely the Drew Oswald family, for those serving in missions throughout the world, the Shaw and Trump family, Shara Osiro in Kenya, as well as Elizabeth and Panem and all those who are under attack in, in Africa. We pray that you would grant safety and deliverance. We pray, O oh Lord, for the Nebraska District congregations of the LCMS, especially Trinity Walton, Trinity Fremont, and Pastor Gerber, and Trinity Lexington, and Pastor Kiefner. We pray for our ministry here in Madison, O oh Lord. We pray for our Trinity School families, Kurt, Jessica, Easton Lane, and Clayton, and Danica. We pray for our Trinity Church families, Margo, Ron, and Sharon, and Braxton, and Al, and Vicki. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks for all who serve as instruments of your compassion those who care for the elderly at home, and those who work in retirement nursing facilities. Grant that we may also serve as your hands and feed and voices to give comfort and company to the lonely. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Be patient with those who do not repent or believe. Send your Holy Spirit to bring them into saving faith. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the leaders of all nations that they would work for peace and justice in the face of conflict and discord. By or despite their efforts, protect the weak and defenseless. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to you all who endure the bondage of decay through infirmity and weakness. Especially this day, we pray for Anne, Galen, Joyce, Pat, Al, Tom, and Joan. For Jeremiah, Brittany, and Matthew, Liam, Ron, Samantha, Mark, Chris, Louise, Jack, Eileen, Esther, Jim, Alex, and Teresa. We pray for Helen, Gavin, John, all the residents and staff at Countryside and all area nursing facilities. For Linda, Cassie, Abby, Berlin, Kaiser, Christy, Bob, Morgan, Clayton, Todd, Susie, Hayden, and Joy. Deliver them according to your will and strengthen and preserve their faith that they may rejoice that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Lord, in your mercy. 
Preserve us in hope for what we do not see, O Lord. Grant that we would receive your words and free from pride, presumption, or any other sin would live our lives according to your word. May we rejoice in this bodily presence with us, O Lord, as you send to us your Holy Spirit. And let us rejoice where there is rejoicing. Let us give thanks where there is reason to give thanks. And let us turn to you, O Lord, at all manner, in all manner of prayer. Especially we give you thanks this day for the successful Madison County Fair Week and all of the volunteers who helped and made our food stand possible. We give you thanksgiving for the completion of chemo treatments for John and the fact that he is doing well, as well as successful surgery for Diane. We give you thanks, O Lord, for new birth. And we thank you, O Lord, and praise you for the birth of Callum to T.D. and Zoe. And we pray your blessing be upon baby Callum. We pray, O Lord, for all expectant families, Christian and May, Justice and Rebecca, Scott and Elizabeth, Casey and Hannah, Kaylee and Jacob, Drew and Jenny, Jordan and Justin, and Brent and Lindsay. We pray, O Lord, for those families with little ones, the Romickers, Grubbs, Frydenbergs, Fredericks, Nelsons, Colmes, Helgas, and Kappels. We pray, O Lord, for those celebrating birthdays this week, Brandon, Scarlett, Amy, Vicki, Jedediah, Harrison, Sheila, Jim, and Andrea, and Lyle, and Seth. We pray for those celebrating another year of baptismal grace, Shakira, Joey, Ethan, Angela, Harlow, and Blake, and those celebrating wedding anniversaries, Michael and Tammy and Bill and Sarah. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have called us according to your purpose. You cause all things to work together for our good. Keep us safe until that day when you gather us with the saints into your kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, keep us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Almighty and gracious God, you want all to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Magnify the power of the gospel in the hearts of your faithful people, that your church may spread the good news of salvation. 
Protect, encourage, and bless all missionaries who proclaim the saving cross that Christ, being lifted up, may draw all people to himself, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Ah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Ah.